You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. That's what my unpredictable hair sounded like before frizzies. Sound familiar? We'll stop the crunchiness and celebrate your curls with Frizz Ease Air Dry Waves. It gives you defined, touchable waves with soft, feather light movement. No heat required and no frizz. And that's the sound you'll hear and feel with your defined, touchable waves from Frizz Ease. Frizz Ease Air Dry Waves, only from John Frieda. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. Businessman, drink my wine. 
This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome, everybody, and welcome, fellow patriots. Welcome once again to the Conservative Commandos radio show. I'm Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network and simulcast on stations in Tampa and the Villages, Florida, Las Vegas and Reno, Nevada, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Boulder, Colorado, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California, and we are very pleased... We are very pleased to announce we are now on 90.3 FM in Jacksonville, Florida, and also 87.9 FM in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So indeed, we are everywhere. We are expanding to even more places. And joining me today as my co-host is the president and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, my very good friend, George Landreth. George, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show. It's the place to be. It is indeed. It is, it is indeed. So, George, we're going to be starting a new little segment on this show today, and that's all around the globe in just a few seconds. And I think there is some very big news coming out of the Democrat Party, coming out of the state of West Virginia. Absolutely. Um, you know, we've uh, talked a lot about when there's a special elections, in each case, the special special election, which the uh, Democrats said they were going to win. And it was going to show that, um, you know, Trump, Trump's victory was an exception. In each case, all they got were moral victories, meaning <laughs> they lost. And uh, their moral victory was evidently that they didn't lose uh, as badly as they might have feared they might lose. But this week, there's no way to put a – you can't call this a moral victory. This is no way to paint this pretty. Uh, you have a sitting Democratic governor of the state of West Virginia who was just elected not too long ago, just a few months ago. And he decided that he could not serve his state as a Democrat, and he said that the re- he was going to switch parties. He invited Donald Trump to be there when he announced his switch. And that he was doing it because he felt that in order to serve the interest of his state, he needed to free himself of the baggage of the Democratic Party and become a Republican. Well, now, I don't know how you call that a moral victory, but someone at MSNBC <laughs> is going to claim it's a moral victory. George, all this talk that we hear every day on the media, how Republicans are in trouble. How Donald Trump is a disaster. George, I got to think this this uh, governor from West Virginia is not an idiot and he would not jump out of any frying pan into any fire, especially switching parties. Um, yeah, if the dialogue is that um, the Republican Party is in disarray and they're in trouble and the Democrats are winning, I would like to, for someone not to provide me compelling evidence. I would accept even a shred of evidence for that idea. Moral victories aside, they haven't won anything, and they actually had somebody who was a Democrat, who won an election as a Democrat, who basically turned his back on them and said, I've had enough of you people. I've had enough of your sh- you know, sh- shenanigans. I'm, I'm going to be with, uh, with Trump. So the Democrats are definitely in trouble. There is no doubt about that. And another interesting little tidbit here is, you know, they keep talking about how they're going to do really well in the, in the 2018 elections. And I, there's a little bit of fact here that might be useful. One, let's assume the Democrats win every seat where there's a congressman who's a Republican who where Hillary either won – or where Trump won by less than three points, mm-hmm. in other words, the close districts. If they win every one of those seats, without exception, every one of them, Senate and House seats, they do not take the House, and they lose five seats in the Senate. Wow. George, so I'm going to go out. point is they're in deep, deep, deep trouble. George, I'm going to go out on an edge here. 
and predict that the governor is not the last Democrat politician to change parties in West Virginia. I got to think that Joe Manchin can see the writing on the wall. He knows how that state went for Donald Trump. But I yeah. got to well, think also, that Joe Manchin close. is the next. Yeah, it wasn't 55-45 or even anything remotely close to that. It, it was a drubbing. I, I'm trying to remember the exact number, what it was. And off the top of my head, I'm not remembering. But I think he was dangerous. 20 close. points. I think it was 20 points. Pretty close to 40-60. Yeah, I think right. Donald Trump won that state by 20 points. During yeah. a break, we'll look that up. Yeah. Hey, George, what is this uh, about Russian Air Force jets over the Pentagon, over the nation's capital? Yeah. It's kind of a crazy story, but um, it, it was not an actual attack. We it was an it was an unarmed Russian Air Force jet. Um, it flew over the Capitol, the Pentagon, the CIA, um, it all these different spots, and it was it was there because it's part of a treaty that was signed years ago called Open Skies, and it allows military aircraft from the United States to fly over parts of Russia for aerial observation, to observe military sites. There's actually 34 nations that have signed it. And so we can do the same there, of course. So they had their opportunity to fly over. I do think it's, it's very provocative what they flew over because you'd think they'd do military bases mm -hmm. to get a sense of what's going on there. But instead, they flew over the golf course uh, in the New Jersey where the president is, uh, was vacationing. They, uh, they did... Um, you know, the Capitol, there's no military there, of course. They did the, the Pentagon military there, but it's just a, it's a, it's a building with five sides when you look at it. There's nothing really to observe. So they picked, a, you know, and same with the CIA building. It's just a big building. So it seems to me that they were just trying to send a signal of, I, I, it was very odd. I, I don't think they got much out of it. They, they also flew over Camp David. Um, <laughs> but as a result, they don't get to go over a lot of the military bases. So it was kind of odd. George, I think yeah, that was Vladimir Putin's sense of humor. I really do. Probably, probably so. <laughs> oh, here we go, George. Another Paris attack. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we're always told that there's no risk from uh, uncontrolled immigration and bringing in, you know, folks from, you know, troubled parts of the world. It's it's just, it's you know, it's our duty and so forth. And apparently what happened is, is this uh, this individual shot a bunch of uh, police officers or French soldiers, I think six of them, and then ran off in his car and they had a big manhunt <laughs> and so forth. Bottom line is this is the sort of thing that's happening over and over in these areas where they have allowed the immigration to kind of be unchecked. And Europe's in a very difficult and precarious spot because they've been doing this for a long time. There was a, a hit and run, a bunch of, you know, ran over them and so forth. I mean, it, bottom line is it'll be interesting to see uh, how it all plays out, but it does not appear that the that this was just, you know, somebody who's upset with the uh, French military. Some news sources have referred to it as a terrorist attack. So I think that's the way it's looking now. You know, I guess we'll find out. But uh, But what's interesting is just how they play this game. The press doesn't want to talk about it. They don't want to tell the story because, after all, they wouldn't want anyone to think that maybe Donald Trump's right about immigration. All right. Can't have that. Absolutely can't have that. George, we have about another minute left before we have to take our first break. And, and how can we do a show without talking about Mueller? Oh, absolutely. Well, Mueller, of course, is the uh, special uh, counsel. And uh, so then there's, there's an interesting article that talks about how he can kind of, you know, I think the risk really is this. Um, special counsels are, are supposed to go out and fish, and you've got to bring back a big fish, otherwise you're a failure. And so the bias is, is always to go out and bring someone, reel someone in. And uh, so the question is, is you know, can Mueller just do justice? Can he do an investigation, present the evidence, and then be done with it? Or does he, subs does he fall prey to the pressure to say, I spent a billion bucks doing an investigation. I got to get a conviction somewhere. So I'm going to, you know, it doesn't matter how good or bad it is. I'm just going to work on it. And so we'll see what happens. But I think the bottom line is if he does his job, he should come out with a study, give us the facts, and then be done with it. Um, because I'll be surprised if there's any there there. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts, ma'am. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. 
Coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, KRLN Radio, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24-7, Talk America Radio Network. We're everywhere, and today's show, like all our shows, is being brought to you by the First Amendment, protected by the Second. Don't go away. George and I will be right back with more news and commentary. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not from government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and for their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do. And join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty Health Share and take back control of your health care while helping those around you. Call us at 855-58-LIBERTY for more information or check us out online at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. I'm Sharon Engel and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can leave, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. June 30th is the FEC fundraising deadline. I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Hey, 
And welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth, President and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcasts of our show, please check out our websites, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com, or at midnight, log on to redstatetalkradio.com, or you can hear our show any time of the day from your telephone. That's right, from your telephone. You don't need an app. You don't need to download anything. You just need this number, 832-999-1199. Please check us. Also, check us out on Twitter and Facebook. On Twitter, it's Conservative Commandos. On Facebook, it's the Conservative Commandos Facebook group page. George, North Korea. I don't know what to think about this. Is North I don't Korea know. in the news? Is North Korea in the news? Is it? <laughs> Continues to be in the news. You were saying you don't know what to think? I don't know what to think. Well, you know what I think is interesting? Um, I'll tell you what I, what I, my solution for all this would be. Have a lot of people saying, well, we have to negotiate with these people. We have to sit down and talk with them. Well, they don't want, they want to talk with the North Koreans. They don't want to talk to the Russians, but that's another subject. Some people are saying, let's drop the D-bomb on them. Let's get them over with. George, why not send in a hit team to take out Kim Jong-un? Just a hit team to take him out. Um, that's an interesting, uh, an interesting solution because the truth of the matter is he's probably the big problem. There may be some people around him as well that are a problem, so we might want to take out you know, his top leadership as well. But the reality is... I don't think the average um, North Korean is actually wanting to nuke the United States. They're much more interested in figuring out how they're going to eat tomorrow, um, how they're going to, you know, get basic, you know, like if we were sitting in the dark for the last 25 years, we'd be a little grumpy for them. That's the norm. So, you know, I mean, I, I don't think they're, but this is the interesting thing though. I see it as at least as the left in America. Um, this is kind of what's happened the last couple of days. Kim Jong-un's talked about nuking the United States, Guam, which is, has a huge military base on it. It's the one that might have capsized, if you might recall. Um, thankfully, it hasn't capsized yet. Um, I say that in jest. Remember when uh, Congressman Hank Johnson um, asked the admiral in a hearing, I think it was 2010, March 2010, he, uh, they were doing some base relocations, and he was worried that they might put too much stuff in, on Guam and they would overload it on one side, and would, in his words, capsize it, and it would flip over. Um, anyhow, um, so certainly if, if it gets hit by a nuclear bomb, it might capsize. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> just, if you don't believe me, just ask Hank Johnson. Congressman well, George, from Georgia. Seems, again, my point is this. As you say, there are a lot of people in North Korea who, do, who will – to, who do not want to nuke the United States, and I say, why nuke all those people in North Korea? The problem is one guy, this right. one tin horn dictator, and yeah, there may be some other troublemakers around him, but it it seems to me, George, whenever you have one of these tin horn dictators, the people around them aren't that bright either, because anybody who has a brain would be perceived as a threat to right. the dictator. Yeah, they so they're eliminated. Killed. Take out Kim Jong-un, problem solved. Yeah. Well, no, I don't disagree with you that, on that point at all. Um, but So the press sees this happen, Kim Jong-un threatening people with uh, nuclear annihilation, uh, threatening to uh, destroy Guam and, and capsize it, which should have at least one Democrat in the House really upset. Um and they're upset because Donald Trump tells them they better cut it out. And they don't think that's, you know, very um, – that he's just going to make things worse. And I guess my response would be this. Um, let's be honest. Let's think about this for a moment. What have we been doing for the last 25 to 30 years? Answer, we've been talking politely and negotiating and using State Department logo or talk, you know, lingo when we talk with him. And what has it gotten us? It's gotten us where we've taken our nuclear weapons off the peninsula 
and he now has nuclear weapons. So whatever it is we've done for the last 25 years, it's time to try something else. And so, you know, will will Donald Trump saying they better cut it out and uh, saying that if they don't, they're going to meet with a lot of uh, trouble? Is that going to be a um, fix it? I don't know. But it's it can't possibly do any worse than we have the last 25 years. Well, George, and, let's let's back up this conversation. Where did Ting, Kim Jong Un get the nuclear technology in the first place? Well, I think that would be with that Bill and Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I mean, Bill Clinton re- re- had a deal with um, K- Kim Jong Un's father, Kim Jong Il, or as I called him, Kim Jong Mentally Ill, um, <laughs> and the deal was. Um, essentially, they would give up their nuclear program. They were even going to give up uh, just nuclear power generation, and they were going to convert to you know coal or gas or oil or whatever. And that the West was going to help fund all that, and that was the payoff. Was that we'd give them money so they could afford to you know generate electricity, so they could not light the capital city in the uh, middle of the night, for example. I don't know what they need electricity for in that country anyhow. But it, you know, you've seen the picture, right? Yep. So, but nonetheless, that was a deal. And we were told, you know, peace in our time and blah, blah, blah. Well, 25 years later, they have nuclear weapons. They've been able to miniaturize them. And they have uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles that can reach the West Coast. They can go far as far east as Denver. So Alaska, California, Washington State, Oregon, you know, California, you know, Utah. Hawaii. Hawaii, uh, Idaho, you know, go to, you know, go look on a map and draw a line through Denver, Colorado, and anything to the west of that is in their range right now, and their range is growing every other month. So it won't be long before, you know, Philadelphia, New York, and Washington, D.C. are in their range. And, um, And this is the deal that, this is the really good deal that people praised Mr. Uh, Clinton for signing, and of course it meant nothing. And uh, so I would argue, um, yeah, yeah, the same people who, who praised the, the, that deal, the same people who praised every president since then, and we, you know, and nothing's been good has been happening with North Korea. Um, they're the ones now condemning this. So I, I, I just, you know, do I will that will that talk make a difference? I don't know, but it can't hurt. Well, George, you know, you're talking about the western part of the United States, Alaska, Hawaii, California, everything west of uh, Denver. But we also have some allies, such as Japan, such as the the Philippines. Uh, They're also South Korea, obviously, they're under threat by that, too. Any attack on them, the United States is going to get involved. It's a really, really, really messy, messy situation. Right. One of the things that's weird, though, is they've been saying, like, oh, Trump spoke out of turn. This is unscripted. His staff was totally shocked. And then Mathis comes out and says, um, you know, and warns and says that uh, talks about um, a military solution would be tragic and on an unbelievable scale. He says that North Korea must choose to stop isolating itself and stand down in its pursuit of nuclear weapons. And that if it doesn't, um, that it would lead to the end of the regime and the destruction of its people. Wow. So that, I, that's not what I would call kind of, you know, make nice, you know, diplomatic talk. That's pretty tough stuff. So it doesn't sound to me like he was too blown away or too shocked or too, oh, my gosh, what did Trump say? It sounds to me like he was saying basically the same thing. Hey, George, break time once again. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with, with George Landreth, president and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, and yours truly, Rick Trader. And we're coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network and simulcast on stations in Jacksonville, Tampa, and the Villages, Florida, Las Vegas, and Reno, Nevada, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Boulder in Colorado Springs, Colorado, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California. We are everywhere. Don't go away, George, and I'll be right back with more news and commentary. And we also have a couple of great guests for you today. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not from government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? 
Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and for their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do. And join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty Health Share and take back control of your health care while helping those around you. Call us at 855-58-LIBERTY for more information or check us out online at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. I'm Sharon Engel and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can leave, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. June 30th is the FEC fundraising deadline. I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. And welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader, and for rebroadcasts. Please check out our websites, ccrshow.com or CCRS Network, or at midnight, log on to redstatetalkradio.com. But now you can hear our show at any time, 24 hours a day, and you don't need a radio, you don't need a computer. All you need is a, is a telephone and this number, 832-999-1199. No download needed, no app needed, just a telephone. And this number, and once again, it's 832-999-1199. And again, please follow us on Twitter, Conservative Commandos on Twitter. And on Facebook, it's the Conservative Commandos radio show group page. Love to hear from you. So George Immigration is in the news again. Interestingly, this headline doesn't come out of the United States. It actually comes out of Canada where Canada is sending soldiers to the Canadian-U.S. border to stop immigrants. Yep. I mean, it's funny. Um, you know, everyone acts like the idea of protecting your borders is such an insane idea. And we see in Europe when they didn't do it, it's created problems. And now Canada 
is doing it. And it's not because they're trying to keep you and I from coming to visit Niagara Falls. It's because we have folks that um, are, you know, here that are part of the, uh, I think, part of the Syria program that are essentially trying to get up into Canada. And they've decided, whoa, 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 we're not sure we want that. So, again, I guess this is Trudeau, right? Trudeau is supposed to be the darling of the left. He's supposed to be the guy that's like, the, you know, the dream candidate, so awesome and wonderful. And we find out that even Canada isn't completely insane. They understand that you have to be sure that you know who's coming into your country, why they're there, and what their intentions are. And so uh, I think what we see in the news is more and more that, um, you know, immigration reform, securing the border, those sorts of things, um, you know, Donald Trump's immigration plan are not – the radical stuff of lunacy, but in fact, they are the time tested um, points of reality that just any nation state that wants to continue and be healthy and protect itself would do. <clears throat> even, even a country headed by a leftist like, you know, Mr. Trudeau. Well, George, you talk about the, the folks that are here. And uh, there are a lot of very bad folks that are here in the 23 percent, according to the Division of Homeland Security, 23 percent of federal prisoners are illegals. Now, let's do the math, George. There are about two million people in federal prison at, at the present time. So that's 20 p 23 percent of two million. That's almost a uh, half a million, 500,000, 500,000 illegals are here. <laughs> These folks are here, but they're in our federal prisons. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, this gives you the, the idea. And I understand that not everyone who emigrates to America is a criminal. Not even every person who sneaks into America is a criminal. But what is the, what is the population... And that's 25% of our prison population, essentially, at one in four. That's insane. The, the number, does, do people understand what that costs Americans every single year? I mean, I just think we've got to figure out how to, to get our head around this problem because you have the left who's very interested in bringing people in and making them citizens or giving them the right to vote, whether they're citizens or not. And that's their sole reason for doing this. And they would destroy this country if all so they can pick up a few votes in, in some areas and, and win a few more elections. I think that makes them really, really bad Americans if you would destroy your country for your own gain. And yet that's what they're trying to do. I mean, that's the only, you know, that's just how it is. And, well, George, um, George, these people are ridiculous. The people on the left are ridiculous because – as you say, they are trying to destroy this country. And why are they trying to destroy it? So they can regain the political power that they had. It, it, it's just an absolutely crazy situation, George. 25% of the, of the prisoners in our federal prisons are illegal. Unbelievable. Right. So, George, last week, President Donald Trump made a, made a statement on foreign policy. What's your take on what he had to say? Um, are we talking about the, uh, the immigration policy that he, uh, yes. that, yeah, the, the raise act. Um, well, you know, I, I think it makes some sense. Um, people assume that be, uh, that for immigrants, they always want more immigration or more immigration is better, but I would argue that's not actually true. I would argue that, uh, immigrants in order to really enjoy the experience of coming to America need to be able to, uh, to, uh essentially, um, not just immigrate and arrive here, but then they, they need to fit in and they need to assimilate. And that's how they, you know, at some point, all of us had people who came to America and they assimilated and they became Americans. And um, that then allowed them to participate in the American dream. When you come to America and, and are not assimilated into America, you effectively are on the outside looking in and you may be better off than if you're in your other country. Cause a lot of these people are coming from countries that are complete and total train wrecks. But the reality is you're not really participating in the American dream. So Donald Trump said, we're going to reduce the number. 
We're going to have you come based on family ties and based on qualifications. Um, we want to encourage the best and the brightest from all of the country, all of the world to get here and uh, and to come here and to welcome them. Um, but we don't necessarily want people who want who we do not want people who are coming here to get benefits. That's part of the problem. You could have an open uh, society, you know, let, pretty much let anybody immigrate who wanted to in 1880 because we didn't give them anything. There were there were no government programs. All you got was opportunity when you arrived. Today, if you show up and you're hungry or you want this or that or you heck you want to change sexes, we'll probably pay for it. You know, I mean, you know, with, at least with Chelsea Manning, we did or Bradley Manning. You know, so bottom line is. Um, when you're giving away free stuff, you can't say we have an open door policy, you know, but when all you're saying is if you want to come here and work really hard and try really hard, you can probably get ahead. Well, fine. Then you're going to attract hardworking, diligent people who are going to make it, you know, something for themselves. But when people are coming to participate in a giveaway, you're not getting that kind of person. So he's trying to return it to a point where we get hardworking entrepreneurial people who want to make something of themselves. I think that's a good thing. I don't think that's bad, and it's not even bad for immigrants. What it means is when they come to America, they'll be able to become Americans and enjoy the American experience. That's a good thing. Well, George, when you talk about fitting in or assimilating to our society, that's what is not happening with these new immigrants that are coming into the, the United States. What they're trying to, what they seem to be wanting to do, George, is to bring with them what they, to bring here with them what they left. They don't want to speak English. They don't want to raise the American flag. They want to raise the flag of the country that they came from. Um, when you talk about the best and the brightest coming here, well, George, only one in 15 of immigrants that are even coming here legally are coming here with a talent, skill, or an education to get uh, that they can get a job, that they can support themselves in this country. That right. means 14 out of 15 coming into this country, even legally, are falling into the, the uh, social services system. And when you talk about we need these people, we need the, 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 the best and the brightest. Well, George, maybe there's a problem in our colleges and universities. Maybe we need the brains coming in from, from outside, from other countries, because colleges today are not, are not educating students to get a job. They're getting well, degrees I mean, we're, we're, in things like... Gender studies. Yeah, I mean, how is gender yeah. studies going to prepare you for a job? My favorite degree is, um, is um, you know, a uh, fem feminist renaissance poetry. You know, like, you know, what are you going to do with that? At any rate, um, bottom line is you have to have an immigration policy that makes America stronger and better. You can't have an immigration policy that's designed to give away uh, stuff to the rest of the world. We simply don't have the resources to provide everyone who would like free stuff to have free stuff. That's not a serious policy. It sure is not. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with George Landreth. I'm Rick Trader, and we're coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, KRLN Radio, iHeart Radio, AM FM 24-7, Talk America Radio Network, and a whole bunch of others. As I said, we are everywhere. We are everywhere. Don't go away. George and I will be right back with more news commentary and we'll clue you in on who our guests are for today. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Mr. Spanner, drink my wine. 
Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network or around the world on the internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not from government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and for their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do. And join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty Health Share and take back control of your health care while helping those around you. Call us at 855-58-LIBERTY for more information or check us out online at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. I'm Sharon Engel and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can leave, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. June 30th is the FEC fundraising deadline. I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Conservative Commando's Radio Show with George Landreth. President and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, and yours truly, Rick Trader. We're coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network and simulcast on stations all over the country, Jacksonville, Tampa, Villages, Florida, Las Vegas, and Reno, Nevada, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Boulder, Colorado, Colorado Springs, Colorado, one of our newest stations, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California, and our list is growing. It's growing daily, George. Hey, George, we got a couple of great guests who will who we will be interviewing today. Who you who will you be talking with? Absolutely. Um, I've arranged to have Dane Waters on. He is a GOP operative. He um, 
He is the CEO of Tipping Point Strategies. It's a communication and advocacy firm based in D.C. Very interesting resume. He is, um, uh, for example, was the founder and chair of the Initiative and Referendum Institute at USC, Southern California. Um, he is also um, um, worked on um, – well, he's, he, he has a blog that's called uh, This is the Point, and, um, but he has a real interest in Burma, and uh, he is an expert on uh, kind of Asia, and, it, and we're going to talk to him a little about what's going on there, because Burma used to be a country that I think we would associate to being kind of like North Korea. Um, it was a military junta, it was all this, and good things have been happening there. And uh, he's going to talk a little about why that's good for America, um, how we can encourage that to continue happening, and maybe spread that because um, you know military juntas generally uh, involve killing people and taking away their freedom and liberty and threatening their neighbors. So anytime a country stops being a military junta and starts taking a step towards liberty and freedom, generally speaking, uh, not only do the, does the populace of the nation benefit, but their neighbors and the rest of the world does as well. So I think the conversation with Dane should be pretty interesting. All right. And also we'll be talking with Dale Bellis. Dale is the executive director of Liberty Hell Shares. Dale led the reorganization plan that launched Liberty Hell Shares under the terms of the Affordable Care Act for Health Sharing Ministries. Liberty Hell Shares dates its origins Back to the mid-1980s, when Dell began work in healthcare as an executive administration with the Jurist Cost Sharing uh, Program, and uh, with the experience in both secular healthcare plans and cost sharing plans, Dale founded Liberty Health Shares in 2012 to provide Americans with an alternative, a legal alternative to government mandated health insurance or health care. And here you go. Everybody wanted to get out, wants to get out from Obamacare. This is a great way. Liberty Health Shares, Dale Bellis will be one of our guests today. That's good news because, you know, you look at uh, how the Senate let us down recently. Yep. And the good news is there are some options out there for Americans. And, uh, and you know, that we'll have a chance to hear about them. All right. I want, I'm going to be asking Dale today about his views on what is happening with health care in Washington, D.C. An insider who's on the outside looking in. Can't wait to get Dale's views on uh, on everything going on in Washington as far as Obamacare and health care and, and things like that. Well, George, the Dow hit another record high, 22,000. I well remember the election night when the stock market was teetering and going down and, oh, all the pundits on all the alphabet networks were crying in their beer. Oh, this is terrible for America. If Donald Trump gets elected, the, the market's going to crash 22,000, George, a new record high. Yeah. I mean, uh, the NASDAQ is up 18 percent just this year. Uh, you know, that's in six months. Do the math on that one. That means, it, you know, if it continues this pace, it would be up by 36% by the end of the year. That's incredible. Um, you know, and then uh, the, uh, you got the job market's been heating up. The unemployment rate has fallen uh, by a full half a percentage point. Um, and the interesting thing is that the, one of the problems during the uh, Obama years is when his unemployment rate dropped, it was simply because the uh, many, many people were dropping out of the workforce. They weren't finding work. They're just giving up looking for work, and therefore they're no longer counted as unemployed. That's not why Donald Trump's unemployment rate is dropping. There are actually more and more Americans jumping into the economy and finding jobs. And so now, once again, um, you know, we have... Uh, more than 160 million Americans that are working, something that Barack Obama never was able to accomplish in eight years. Um, Mr. Trump did it in less than eight months. So those are some pretty important things. And, um, you know, so as I, as I see it, um, the other thing that's interesting is uh, when, when Obama did his, 
you know, quote, you know, the miracle that he did economically for us. May, basically, you had the Federal Reserve pumping trillions of dollars through quantitative easing into the economy. Donald Trump's economy does yeah. not have trillions of dollars being pumped into it. It's being done because, one, he's helped return some optimism and uh, the belief that um, we can accomplish good things in America. And he's gotten rid of a lot of crazy um, sorts of, you know, the regulatory regimes, uh, energy, those kinds of things that are holding things back. Interestingly, wages are rising for the first time since uh, basically Barack Obama took the presidency. The um, uh, Department of Labor data uh, just released not too long ago uh, showed that the average pay for the lowest income Americans went up um, just in that, just this so far this year by over 3%, almost three and a half percent. So again, if it continues that pace by the end of the year, they will have gotten a 7% pay increase, something that they probably, I don't think they even got that in eight years of Barack Obama. Probably I mean, most, not. Most hey, people George, basically had flat, flat income. George, here's the number for you. One million. There are one million more Americans working today and there are one million less people on food stamps. You know, you talk and that and you, you twice. Yeah, there you go. And George, when you talk about all the stimulus that TARP, remember TARP? Remember cash for clunkers? You know, all those programs that Obama tried and what kind of effect, what kind of a, a real effect did that have on to our economy? Zilch, zero. The jobs that were created during the Obama administration were those burger flipping jobs, were right. those burger flipping jobs. They were disproportionately part-time jobs and they were low wage jobs. And so what you had was people um, that used to have professional jobs, um, jobs that were good paying jobs, and they ended up getting two part-time jobs trying to make, you know, hold things together. They weren't, they were working more hours and making less money. That was the Barack Obama economy and what we see now is an economy where we're having jobs you can actually raise a family on and ones that uh, can become a career for you not just a stopgap measure the problem with Barack Obama's stuff was it wasn't a stopgap measure it was the new normal yep the new normal and by the way Donald Trump is breaking that new normal but you know George if you listen to the media you know, if you listen to the media, this administration is in total, total chaos. I wonder if the American people are listening to, to the media or if they are feeling the, the rising economy in their paychecks, getting jobs, being able to go back to achieve the American dream once again. Yeah, I mean, this has been a... I know the press likes to act as if every time Donald Trump says something, it's it's you know trouble. The reality is this has been a pretty uh, substantive presidency. They've gotten a lot of things done, even without Congress working hard. But whether it's uh, stuff that Jeff Sessions has done, the Justice Department, in foreign affairs, uh, you look around uh, with regulatory reform, all that stuff. It's making a difference. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. Well, George, you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth. I'm Rick Trader. We're coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, KRLN Radio, iHeartRadio, AMFM 24-7, Talk America Radio Network. Don't go away, George, and I'll be right back with our first guest, Dal Bellis from Liberty House Shares. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not from government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and for their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. 
Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty Health Share and take back control of your health care while helping those around you. Call us at 855-58-LIBERTY for more information or check us out online at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. I'm Sharon Engel, and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can leave, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. June 30th is the FEC fundraising deadline. I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome, everybody, and welcome, fellow patriots. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. I'm Rick Trader, and I'm co-hosting today with George Landreth, President and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom. And if you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of our shows, please check out our websites, ccrshow.com or CCRS Network, or at midnight, log on to redstatetalkradio.com. But now you can hear our show any time of the day from your telephone by calling 832-999-1199. You don't need an app. You don't need to download anything. You just need a telephone in this number, 832-999-1199. And, George, we have our next guest with us, and I'd like to introduce or reintroduce to the Conservative Commandos radio show because he's a good friend of ours and has been on many times in the past. Uh, Dale Bellis is currently the executive director of Liberty Health Share. He led the reorganization plan that launched Liberty Health Share under the terms of the Affordable Care Act for Healthcare Sharing Ministries. And with this experience in both secular health care plans and cost sharing ministries, Mr. Bellis found Liberty Health Share in 2012 to provide Americans with an alternative to government mandated health care. Dale Bellis, welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show. Rick, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Thanks so much for your invitation. Well, Dale, we always look forward to having you here with us on Conservative Commandos. And let's start out the interview by asking me to please explain to our audience what Liberty Health Share is and how health share share or health cost sharing began. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, opportunity to do so. We, 
We are a nationwide nonprofit association of men and women of faith and values who have joined together around a common cause, and that is paying each other's medical bills. And we do that without the aid of an insurance company or the government, just a regular systematic way of mm-hmm. meeting health care costs. Uh, and, uh, and we do that, again, through a methodology of mutual aid or mutual assistance. Mm-hmm. So the concept has been in place, literally, Rick, for generations. I mean, it's the way Christians have always taken care of one another whenever there was a crisis. We've just simply relaunched, reorganized back from the, uh, uh, under the terms of the Affordable Care Act from 2010 uh, and taken an, an existing health care sharing ministry organization uh, and relaunched, redesigned, uh, and made it available and affordable for all. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's really the foundation for how we're changing health care together. Well, Dale, it's very interesting what you said, because government has gotten into the business of health care and they made it a real mess. I was wondering, uh, I'm sure you keep up on the health care debate that's in Washington and President Trump to repeal and replace or replace Obamacare. And now the pushback coming from Congress. What is it, your opinion about what Washington is trying to do? Uh, it, it, to me, they are addressing uh, uh, two uh, errors, and they haven't really gotten on to the right topic yet, Brick. Yeah. Uh, the error, the first one is that somehow the federal government has a role in defining and organizing uh, the use of health insurance. Uh, that, that's a new concept that's only been introduced into our fair republic since 2010 in the passage right. of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, that's number one. Uh, number two is they're addressing the wrong topic. The topic is not the rising cost of health insurance. The, the, the issue is what, what, why is health or medical coverage or medical care so difficult to access and so costly. If they, because there's been a conflation of those terms, they use the term health care when in right. reality they're talking about health insurance, not medical care. And if our focus was on how do we access and reduce the cost of the care of our health, it would change the debate overnight and it would change the cost curve almost immediately because now we're talking about what the real issue is. But Congress, unfortunately, uh, has focused on what are the terms and conditions under which we buy health insurance and have not addressed the underlying cause of why inflation is occurring in the cost of our care. Well, Dale, let's take those on one at a time. And and when you talk about insurance versus health sharing ministries, please explain how please explain how members of health care sharing ministries um, and the difference between that and insurance. Please explain the difference between the two. Uh, It's a whole different premise. It's a different mindset and uh, and paradigm. Uh, right. Health insurance is based upon contracts of indemnity, uh, so that based upon the submission of, of a premium in the instance of insurance, uh, there are certain losses if that I incur. There's a promise to pay. Health sharing is is not based on a contract that says I'm obligated to do something. It's based on a shared value that says, I participate voluntarily and cooperatively because it's an expression of my heartfelt beliefs. Mm -hmm. And that belief is twofold. One, that uh, God's really placed us here on earth to assist others whenever they have a a need. Uh, If you're the kind of person that uh, that drops money in uh, in the Salvation Army bucket or assists people that you hear about that have a a need, that's our kind of folks. We're simply taking that principle of assisting others whenever there's a, a valid need, and we've turned it to a solution for health care. The second principle is that God's given us the right to manage, direct, and control the care of our health free from government intrusion. Those two principles is what shapes and guides uh, our voluntary cooperation to help pay each other's medical bills, 
uh, and we do that on a regular monthly basis. Uh, and we're motivated because of our closely held beliefs, not because some contract binds us to it. Dale, as you said that uh, health cost sharing is a time-tested method. And things to me seem to get very garbled when government got involved. I can remember in the 1990s, 1992, 1993, when this ugly term Hillary Claire evolved, or Hillary <laughs> Care evolved. And at Rick, the Rick, time, you're, you're dating, you're dating yourself, my young man. You're dating well, yourself. <laughs> well. Dale, when you say young man, you're lying to our audience. So I, uh, I'm older than dirt. But at that okay. time, Dale, at that time, I was dating somebody who was the vice president in a hospital system. And I remember when the the term Hillary Care evolved and national health care and all the scrambling that they went through at the time to prepare for Hillary care or to prepare for a national health care system. And that was a mess. And ever since then, the cost of or even at that time, the threat of government getting involved in health care, those costs have escalated. And now we're getting tests for things that we don't need whenever we go in for a procedure. Like I've had two hip replacements in the last um, 10 years or so. And prior to those hip replacements, I had to go through a whole battery of tests that had nothing to do with with my uh, hip replacements. But it just seemed like those were tests for the doctors, the hospitals to cover themselves against government intrusion, against lawsuits and, and all this. And it just seems like, you know, we've taken a time tested method of healthcare. And when government got involved, it, that's when it all got real muddled. Well, that's why I say if the discussion really was about the rising costs and access of the care uh, of medical care we would really then focus on what are the true drivers behind the increased uh, red tape and bureaucracy, as you've just pointed out, uh, mm. and, and what is it that contributes to these rising costs. There are two major flaws in our existing health care system, and, and they are this. It's what I call the third-party pay system, Number one. And number two is the existence not of health care, but of sick care. Right. Uh, and, and let me just touch quickly on those two. Uh, the first is if there is a third party paying for the cost of your care and or mine, it's coming out of somebody else's pocket, an insurance company, the government, an employer. Number one, I ha I'm insulated from the costs associated with that care. And I don't even know about what the expenses are. And I'm not motivated to make any changes to the care being presented to me because I'm not paying for it. It creates an entitlement mentality. If tomorrow morning every, every individual in America was a self-pay patient responsible for their own care and their own costs, which is exactly what members of health care sharing ministries are and members of Liberty Health Share. We're self-pay patients. We just simply choose to share those costs in community with, with one another. It's our money. It's our pockets. It's the pockets of our fellow members. We have skin in the game. Yep. That's what changes the mindset. And the second is when I access health care, if it's a sick care system, the entire mm -hmm. economics, the entire economic setup in healthcare today is the more the doctor sees me because I'm sick, the more they get paid. Mm -hmm. We've got to change that model. Uh, and we've done that with healthcare sharing. Here on the Conservative Commandos radio show, we are speaking with Dale Bellis, who is the executive director of Liberty Health Shares. Dale, we got to go to a quick break. Can you hold on for just a couple of minutes? Because Rick, I'd be delighted to. On Thank the you. other side, I would like to ask you, how does Liberty Health Share get exempt from Obamacare? But you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with George Landreth. 
president and CEO of Frontiers of Freedom, and I'm Rick Trader, and we're coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network and simulcast on radio stations in Jacksonville, Tampa, and the Villages, Florida, Las Vegas and Reno, Nevada, Macon, Georgia, Boulder, and now Colorado Springs, Colorado, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California. Indeed, we are everywhere. We're everywhere. Don't go away. George and I'll be right back with our guest, Dale Bellis. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not from government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and for their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do. And join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty Health Share and take back control of your health care while helping those around you. Call us at 855-58-LIBERTY for more information or check us out online at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. I'm Sharon Engel and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can leave, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. June 30th is the FEC fundraising deadline. I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. (laughs) 
And welcome back to the Conservative Commandos radio show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, KRLN Radio, iHeart Radio, AM, FM, 24-7, Talk America Radio Network. We are everywhere. We are everywhere. And our guest this segment is Dale Bellis. Dale is the executive director of Liberty Health Shares. Dale, thanks for holding through that break. We really do appreciate your time. Rick, thank you for the opportunity to be with you. I appreciate the invitation. Well, you're quite welcome, and we appreciate you. We appreciate what you do, and we appreciate you taking time to explain Liberty Health Shares with our audience. Um, Dale, as I teased right before we went to our break, please exp- explain how members of healthcare sharing ministries are exempt from the requirements of health insurance under Obamacare. Yeah, thankfully, at the passage of the ACA, uh, the legislators recognize that there's an entire population of individuals engaged in healthcare sharing that are self-supporting, are not drawing upon the resources of the government, uh, and are utilizing their own personal resources to care for one another. Uh, and they injected into the ACA a total exemption uh, based upon five criteria to be a recognized healthcare sharing ministry, one being that you be a religious nonprofit, uh, secondly, that you have an annual audit, you never drop anybody from the rolls if they begin if they get too sick etc and so we meet all that criteria uh, they've issued us a recognition letter that we are a recognized healthcare sharing ministry so all of our members are exempt from both the fines of the affordable care act as well as the mandates mm-hmm. and rick the reason why that second one is so crucial we're all familiar with the lawsuits that have been filed uh, you know, w- w- with the Hobby Lobby and Conestoga Wood and the Little Sisters of the Poor and others who, w- under closely held beliefs, are being asked to use their money in ways that violate their conscience and their ethical values. Mm-hmm. And we in healthcare sharing have decided among and between ourselves the kinds of bills we share in, and we don't participate uh, in the use of our money for things that would violate our conscience. The most egregious example uh, being abortion and abortive fashions. Uh, That's one of the ways in which we decide among ourselves as to how we will or will not use our money in sharing medical costs. Mm -hmm. Dale, uh, explain this to explain this to me in and our audience your website says that liberty health shares is a health care sharing ministry of the gospel light mennonite church medical and aid plan do you have to belong to a church or a specific church to join liberty health shares and what do i have to do to qualify yeah no no you really don't uh, we, we uh, we, we do not impose a particular religious ideology or doctrinal statement or ask how many times you attend church or even identify what uh, religion you are. Uh, we just simply have a set of shared beliefs, uh, is what we call them. Uh, so long as you identify with those beliefs, we welcome you in based on, uh, on that share, those shared values. There's mm-hmm. five of them, and they can, you can see them on our website. But again, it's... it's uh, Uh, focused on uh, really uh, three essential principles. Uh, One, uh, that uh, our bodies are temples, and we are to take care of our bodies because we have an obligation to do so. We use our resources to assist others uh, whenever they're in in need, uh, and that we have the God-given right to direct our health care. And so those uh, those are the three principles, but they're broken out into five statements, so we encourage people to check it out. Uh, the other qualifications, frankly, uh, are uh, that, you, that you not abuse alcohol or, or drugs uh, and that you just really commit to uh, a, a health-conscious lifestyle. Now, notice that I said I didn't say that you commit to be healthy, but mm-hmm. rather health conscious. That simply means you're going to take steps of action that enhance health and, 
and creates prevention and you're taking care of your body. That's what we are. That's one of the, uh, of the shared beliefs and values that draw us together as a community. And it certainly contributes, Rick, to the downward trend of our costs uh, as opposed to the rest of the universe that are struggling with this uh, skyrocketing expense about health care. Well, Dan, when you talk about that, you know, I've never had an addiction unless you want to call ice cream an addiction. I've never smoked. <laughs> I only I only drink it occasionally. That's usually with pasta, like a nice glass of, of a, a nice sangria or something like that. Uh, occasionally people slip. Occasionally people slip. Uh, maybe uh, an ex-smoker goes back to cigarettes for a short period of time, or maybe an alcoholic falls off the wagon and has a few drinks and gets back on. Would that preclude them from continuing to be members of uh, Liberty Health Share? No, no, it would not, because that's a... Uh, th- those are the, as you've just pointed out, the natural proclivities of humankind right. uh, to, uh, uh, to, to err. Uh, but if the focus is on health consciousness uh, and taking steps to maintain and preserve our health, that's really what we're after. Let me just tell you that we do accept smokers, but they have to commit to quit. And we assign them a health coach. Uh, we give them motivations and support and encouragement to reach that goal, uh, and we celebrate their accomplishment whenever they do uh, stop smoking. Uh, as, and we do that with other health, sty- health lifestyle diseases, high blood pressure, heart disease, uh, and type 2 diabetes, certainly obesity. Uh, we, we assign a health coach. It costs an additional $80 a month. We call it Health Track. Uh, and we uh, encourage and, and support that person to reach their own determined, self-determined goals. And once they reach those lifestyle health uh, goals, uh, we celebrate with them when they accomplish that. Dale, your website, and by the way, it is a great website. Your, web, your website describes Liberty Health Share's three program options. Uh, Liberty Complete, Liberty Plus, and Liberty Share. Can you please explain them and how they differ from one another? Uh, yeah, they basically differ on the, um, uh, on the amount, what we call per incident, that we're going to share in. So those programs are there for different budgets and needs. Our most popular program is Liberty Complete. And we start sharing in medical bills after our own what we call an annual unshared amount. It's the amount as members we said we won't submit to each other to share. We'll take responsibility uh, to pay for that ourselves. And Mm -hmm. it's up to $1,500 for a family, $500 for a single, $1,000 for a couple, $1,500. And then we start sharing after that up to a million dollars per incident. And this is the Liberty Complete program, a million per incident. By that I mean if you have a heart attack, all the doctor's visits, hospital stays, surgeries, uh, it, you know, medicine associated with that incident go into that million dollars. You have a, a kidney stone the next day, it's another million. You have a broken arm the third day, it's another million. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, w- what we ask for is a, what we call a suggested share amount. Every member sets aside, if you're single, one ninety nine. Or if you're a couple, two ninety nine, or a family of three or more, we don't count more than three, of four forty nine. And that money goes into an online secure account, we call it a share box, and it's matched to another member who has medical bills that month. And so you literally, on a transparent uh, uh, basis, you see your money move from your online account to theirs, and we ask a sufficient number of members to do that to cover their costs. Uh, and we cut a check directly to the doctors and hospitals. At the time your money moves to that member's account, you can mm-hmm. message them with cheer or encouragement or prayer. And so we're standing with each other every month uh, to assist another member uh, to pay their medical bills. And then should ever I have a cost or expense, those members are there to share with my costs based upon that, that outline uh, of medical cost sharing. 
Here on a Conservative Commandos radio show, we are speaking with Dell Bellis, who's the executive director of Liberty House Share. And Dell, as I said, your your website, I really like your website. It's full of great information. It's easy to navigate and understand. But Dell, I Dell, I gotta ask you. Yeah. Where's the fine print? Because it all seems to make sense to me. There's got to be fine print. <laughs> and uh, also, how do we join Liberty Health Share? Your best way is to go to libertyhealthshare.org, libertyhealthshare.org. You can ask for an information uh, packet. We call it a decision guide that will come directly to your email electronically or by mail if you prefer. Uh, you can uh, call the toll-free number, talk to one of our trusted advisors in the contact center, get all your questions answered, or peruse the pages of the website. You can join right there. Join now. Click on that button. It takes about 15, 10, 12, 15 minutes to fill out the information. That re- is reviewed, and you typically hear back in, uh, in about three days uh, regarding it. Uh, and, and so that's the best place to go, libertyhealthshare.org. Uh, because we are a voluntary, cooperative organization of people who join together based upon our shared values and beliefs, uh, we make those decisions among and between ourselves, uh, and that's why those of us who are involved with healthcare sharing wouldn't do it any other way. But libertyhealthshare.org. Dal Bellis. CEO of Liberty House Shares, we want to th- or executive director of Liberty House Shares, we want to thank you so much for joining us here on the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Rick, it was a true pleasure, and thank you so much for the opportunity. God bless. Take care. God bless. Thank you, Dale. I try to I try to ask a little bit different questions today, maybe. There, I think it was excellent. You just you just drew you just drew it out of me today, buddy. Thank you well, so much. I wish we had more time because I had a lot more actually. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get them on another time. Absolutely. Until next time. There you oh, go. Thank you so much, Dale. God bless. Bye-bye. Take care. God bless. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with George Landreth and yours truly, Rick Trader. Coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network and on radio stations in Jacksonville, Tampa, in the Villages, Florida, Las Vegas and Reno, Nevada, Macon, Georgia, Lancaster and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Boulder, Colorado, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Long Beach, California. Indeed, we're everywhere. We're everywhere. Don't go away. On the other side, George and I will be right back with our next guest. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not from government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and for their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do. And join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty Health Share and take back control of your health care while helping those around you. 
Call us at 855-58-LIBERTY for more information or check us out online at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. I'm Sharon Engel, and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can leave, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. June 30th is the FEC fundraising deadline. I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. We're glad you stuck around because we've got a great guest. I also want to remind you that if you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, just check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. At 11 a.m., you can always go to rednationrisingradio.com. And at midnight, you can log on to redstatetalkradio.com and always get the most recent installment of Conservative Commandos. And you don't even need a radio or a computer. You can just call in from your phone and by dialing this number, you can listen to the show, 832-999-1199. Now, as I said, it's a good thing you stuck around because we've got a great guest. We'll be talking with Dane Waters. He is a GOP operative, and um, but perhaps uh, let me just run down a little bit of his resume, and you'll get a sense of who he is and what he's about. We're going to have a very interesting conversation. Dane is the CEO of Tipping Point Strategies. This is a communications and advocacy firm. It's based in the Washington, D.C. area. He uh, provides strategic advice to campaigns, governments, and activists, and NGOs, non-governmental organizations all over the world. He's worked on six continents with government officials, activists, academics, and uh, NGOs as well. He's consulted on projects with the United Nations, the State Department, and the International Republican Institute. He um, was a political appointee um, in uh, the first George Bush administration, H.W. Uh, Bush. Um, and um, he is, I mean, we could go on and take up the entire interview, but you'll get the sense this is an accomplished individual who has uh, done a lot of uh, different things. And we want to talk a little bit about some world affairs, national security things, and what's going on in the, if you will, uh, in Asia. We know that North Korea has been in the news, all these things. So let's talk a little bit. That. Dane, welcome to the Conservative Commandos. Uh, George, thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about, um, 
kind of sum up what's going on in the, in that region of the world. And I think you have some good news for us in terms of there are some, I don't necessarily mean good news with North Korea, but in, in that <laughs> neighborhood, as it were, there are some bright spots and some people who might be in a position to be uh, helpful as we try to uh, get North Korea to behave itself. Uh, yeah, I, um, you know, in Southeast Asia, uh, you know, it, it's really over the last 20 or 30 years has been an area that's been evolving ever since the Vietnam War, uh, you know, with Cambodia and Vietnam and, and uh, Laos. And, and so there's been, you know, the, the U.S. government has kind of slowly been focusing energies and efforts there. And, and there's a country, uh, as many of us have always known it as Burma, which is now known as Myanmar, uh, we, we a lot of us have always called it as the North Korea of of Southeast Asia, primarily because up until five years ago, it really was a black hole. I mean, there was there was no foreign media allowed, there was no uh, interest in the country. Uh, you know, you couldn't travel the country, so forth and so on. There, you know, the U.S. had sanctions on the country, and what was interesting is that everyone was focused on North Korea, and what was going on in North Korea because North Korea has always presented a, a military. Uh, threat not only you know to the region but you know as we as we're seeing now the United States and so Myanmar had been overlooked but over the last five six years um, you've seen a, 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 you know more of an ISIS presence in the region uh, you, you you're seeing that in, in in like Bangladesh which borders Myanmar and so finally the U.S. government was starting to to pay some attention to it because in these black holes. You know, it's not all about just whether they can, you know, lob a nuclear weapon at us. It's about training camps for ISIS. So all that to say is that uh, given some political dynamics in the country, uh, up until uh, five years ago, Myanmar was a military junta, just like North Korea was. Uh, but through support from the U.S. State Department and other um, NGOs and governmental organizations around the world, um, they were able to build an unusual alliance between the military and the and the civilians and so it's really the first place in the world where you have a military junta who has stepped aside peacefully and allowed for the civilians to take over the primary control of the government and there's a lady by the name of her she's the, the first state counselor of Myanmar uh, her name is Aung San Suu Kyi uh, she won the Nobel Peace Prize, and not, not that I like to use continue using these analogies, but she is what many people refer to as a Nelson Mandela of Southeast Asia because she was under house arrest for 15 years. But you know, through her democratic efforts, uh, those uh, support in support from the U.S. government and others, they were able to build this unusual alliance, as I said, between the military and the U.S., which is providing a, a strong um, foothold in the region to push back the ISIS advances that are coming from Bangladesh and other parts of the world. So that's it in a nutshell. So, Pretty interesting stuff. Now, I've heard, and I don't know if this is true, you, you kind of think of the Philippines as not being uh, a hotbed of that sort of thing. But um, is my understanding is that ISIS is gaining a foothold in places like the Philippines as well. And Yeah, they are. I mean, it, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, I mean, you know, what's happening is that, you know, in, in countries, and I hate, you know, the term third world countries we use a lot, of course, but in countries where there aren't strong central governments um, or that have regions that are hard for the central government to control, like the Philippines and like Bangladesh and up until recently, like Myanmar and other parts, uh, it's easy for um, ISIS and other radical uh, Islamist organizations to, um, to basically conceal their efforts. Um, you know, Myanmar is a country of 51 million people and 60 percent of its rule. And if you look at the, you know, the border, you know, in a country like Myanmar where they have porous borders, um, you know, the you know, ISIS was basically coming over from Bangladesh into uh, northeastern uh, Myanmar. And that's a problem you have is that it, it's in the best interest of the U.S. government that, um, you know, democratic governments like the Philippines um, or like uh, you know, Myanmar or Cambodia or Laos, that we have a very positive, strong relationship with them as a way to keep uh, ISIS from establishing a very fertile ground uh, and, and basically you know, establishing training facilities that are almost impossible for us to, to, to root out. Um, 
in, in those parts of the world. And the other thing you see is, is many, you know, as many people who, um, who study, you know, uh, extremism, extremism takes root in areas where they have really poor economic um, opportunities because individuals within those areas are easily persuaded to say, hey, listen, if you take up, you know, if you take up arms with ISIS or you, you if you're trained with ISIS, then you have the opportunity. Uh, it's your life, quote unquote, has meaning. And, um, and, and you saw that a lot in, in, uh, in Myanmar, but because now the U.S. has re- removed sanctions from Myanmar, uh, the economic aspect of the country is growing, um, you know, economic benefits are, are getting into these very rural areas. And so that in itself is helping create this, this wall against ISIS advance, uh, you know, the advancement of ISIS within this area. So, so U.S. involvement economically is critical. And, and, and you know, in Philippines, I mean, their economy has kind of been very rough over the last uh, several years, um, you know, and I and I, I do believe that we as a country can do more uh, in the Philippines um, to try to stop that. But, you know, once again, the Philippines is a, is a country of over a thousand islands. It's kind of hard to police all those areas. So. Right. Well, you know, one of the things that I think is the average American who kind of keeps up on world events in the news <clears throat> is a lot of bad news. And um, I think our listeners would kind of look at Asia as partly because North Korea dominates the news, partly because we hear sporadic reports that ICE is making progress there. And uh, we kind of ask ourselves, is this a, a part of the world that's basically just going to become you know, a black hole or a, um, you know, a hell hole, so to speak? And it sounds like there are some possibilities for good news. Um, some places that were, you know, like you know Burma, the the North Korea of the of the uh, of Southeast Asia, is coming out of that and actually making progress towards being a little more um, forward looking and a little more democratic in its uh, small d democratic in its uh, outlooks. In other words, not Maxine Waters democratic, but democratic <laughs> as in um, supporting the idea of people making choices and uh, not having military or uh, royalty making choices for you. No, so, that, that's exactly right. Well, we're getting close to our – got to take a break in just a moment. So, Dane, can you stick through this break so we can continue this conversation? Yeah, I'd love to. Excellent. That's uh, good news. We'll have we'll have more to talk about afterwards. We are coming to you live from the Conservative Commandos Radio Network and around the world on the internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, and AMFM 24/7. Don't go away. Rick and I and Dane will be right back after these messages. <laughs> The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is the commander of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We've established a front line of conservative leaders and ironclad patriots to revive the promise of America. There must be some kind of way out of here. We patriots have succeeded in securing the next four years of American prosperity, sovereignty, and liberty under President Donald Trump. But the fight is never over, and we must be forever vigilant. Do you have a passion for American values? Do you believe in preserving the American dream? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network or around the world on the Internet at ccrshow.com and ccrsnetwork.com. Check out our websites for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not from government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Health care sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and for their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. 
Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back control of your health care while helping those around you. Call us at 855-58-LIBERTY for more information or check us out online at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org. I'm Sharon Engel, and I approve this message. I'm more convinced than ever that a constitutional free market conservative can win even in a battleground state like Nevada. Nevada's Congressional District 2 is a winnable seat where Trump won because these voters embrace the principles of sound governance and constitutional free market conservatism. The reality is the president can lead, but he cannot do it alone. In Congress, we contend with the Republicans who often do not support what the American people mandated on Election Day. Republicans in D.C. could lose this golden opportunity, and sadly, the biggest beneficiaries will be the establishment and crony capitalism. America is closely divided with Nevada on the front lines of this ideological battle. June 30th is the FEC fundraising deadline. I need to raise enough money to show that I have support to organize this campaign with literature, travel, media ads, and a small staff. Of course, the larger the amount, the more reticent others will be to challenge me in a contested primary, and the less credible the press attack will be. If you are one of the donors who will send $100 or more by June 30th, we will raise $100,000. That's good. If you give $250 or more, we raise $250,000. That's great. And if you give $500 or more, we raise $500,000. That's excellent. The more we raise in the beginning, the greater the odds are that we win. Please join me on Twitter at Sharon Angle and Facebook. Even though Reed is no longer in charge, the establishment machine lives on to defeat anyone who challenges the status quo of crony capitalism. You can help. Give online at SharonAngle.com or mail a contribution to P.O. Box 17373. Reno, Nevada, 89511. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet, we're coming to you live from the CCRS studios. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos. If you want to hear a rebroadcast of the show, and I'm sure you will because you won't want to miss a thing, Check out our websites, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. You can always log on to rednationrising.com at 11 a.m. They always post the new, uh, most latest uh, program. And then uh, at midnight, you can log on to redstatetalkradio.com. And with a phone and this number, you can always listen to Conservative Commandos, 832-999-1100. Nine nine, we have been talking with Dane Waters. Now, um, I I did an a uh, an intro and gave you some of his uh, some of the highlights, but I thought maybe instead of repeating those, I could just give a couple other things that are on uh, his uh, resume, as it were, or his bio. Um, for example, he uh, is the founder and chair of the Initiative and Referendum. Institute at the Southern at the University of Southern California. Um, they study uh, the process of direct democracy through referenda, and um, and on top of that, he has um, um, a, a blog that might you might be of, find of interest. It's called "This Is the Point," and he's a regular columnist at Campaigns and Elections Magazine, but. Um, we have been talking with Dane about uh, Southeast Asia, what's going on there, and specifically about Burma, and why, if you have historically, just saying the last five, ten years ago, considered Burma to be um, a bad place with back, bad dictators um, that uh, were leftward leaning and totalitarian in their nature, you might have reason to feel better about life after hearing many of the developments that are occurring there. Um, 
So, Dane, let's pick up where we left off. Um, one of the things we talked about was that th they've had an individual, a, a woman who was under house arrest for uh, close to somewhere in the better part of two decades, who is helping to lead um, a movement that's taking foot. Why is that good news to us? Why does it matter? How do we know she's not going to just, you know, next week end up back in house arrest and nothing works out well? No, that's a good question. Um, you know, first, you know, if, if you look at uh, Southeast Asia collectively, I mean, you know, Thailand, which a lot of people think is a is a very strong democracy. Um, the problem you have there is that they've had numerous um, military coups over the last 20 to 30 years. And what has really kept those in check is, you know, the king uh, that they had was um, was very supportive of, of democracy and and bridged that between the the, the military and 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 the uh, uh, those uh, civilians. And the problem with Thailand is that the king recently died, and so people are concerned that that bridge is no longer there. Which which makes it even more important that other countries in the region, um, like Myanmar, um, uh, actually have a very strong democracy because, uh, I mean, if you look at Vietnam, which has come a long way, you look at Cambodia, which has come a long way, you look at Thailand, which is now there's some concerns with the military, um, you know, and then you have China, which basically tries to control that whole region. You look at Indonesia in the south. I mean, you know, as far as a strong democracy, it, it's really important that there'll be a, that there be a strong democracy there, which is why, once again, Myanmar really fits the bill. And when you look at Aung San Suu Kyi, um, who is, you know, was under house arrest and who's a Nobel Peace Prize winner. I mean, it's a very precarious situation. I'm, be, I'm going to be clear about that. I mean, what has happened is that the military, because of the of, of the, the agreement, the military still controls 25 percent of the parliament. And it takes three quarters uh, a vote of the parliament to uh, to change any part of the Constitution. Um, in the, the, the most recent elections in 2015, her party uh, won 86 percent of, of the vote. And so they basically control the legislature, except for the automatic 25 percent of, of, that the government has. Can it slip back in, into military rule? Yes, it can, which is why it's critical that the international community continue to do all that it can to support the country economically and otherwise um, to ensure. I mean, it's not that the people because I, mean, I was just there in June. It's not that the people uh, want the military to return. They don't. Um, but if for some reason that the military, you know, starts to believe that um, uh, that as in their mind is in the best interest of the people that they take over control, they will. Um, however, given the fact that sanctions have been removed by the international community, uh, the, the, the democracy is growing. Um, the, the military really and they're honestly, you know, they're just getting basically what they want from the standpoint of, of you know, they still have their little slice of the pie. Um, you know, most people believe that Myanmar will continue to progress as a true democracy and be a, a major player in the region, um, like Thailand was years ago, uh, and really, you know, once again, be, be a bastion against um, ISIS, uh, be a nice, you know, borders China, so it'd be a nice little deterrent uh, to to China, um, you know, and which in turn, the more stability we have in the region. Um, the greater opportunity that we have uh, as, as a world to to push back on countries like North Korea because everyone's unified. So, you know, it's really uh, it's, it's one of those shining examples of what can be, um, you know, when people truly want freedom and they truly want democracy uh, and they're willing to fight for it. And so I think a lot of countries and we as Americans, you know, should uh, should look at what's happening there and and just um, be proud of the fact that they're trying to follow a lot that, you know, that we have done to when we, when our founding fathers established this country. So. Now, quick question. Talk about helping to support their economy. I'm assuming, you know, since this is the conservative commandos, we're talking about doing things that help them become self-reliant as opposed to just shipping them money, uh, you know, in small arm mark bills on pallets or something, kind of like we did with the uh, Iran <laughs> deal. But in, so, Talk about what you mean as how we can, quote, support their economy um, in a way that is kind of in keeping with, I think, the way most of our listeners would, would want to view it, which is we're happy to kind of help people, but we're hoping to have that become a, a methodology for um, uh, self-sufficiency and not just writing checks. No, no, I, I agree 100%. I mean, you know, as, as a you know fiscal conservative and 
you know, I, I'm I'm of the same ilk at, that many of your listeners probably are. That you know, writing just constant checks and to a to a country honestly is not a solution. That, that countries need to be self sufficient. And when I talk about us uh, supporting them, I think it's critical that that we what we do is that we basically um, you know now that sanctions are lifted, then as far as what we can do is just to to you know provide them moral courage, moral support. Um, for what they're doing. And, and, and that's what's happening. I mean, you know, once the sanctions have been lifted, when I was there in June, I mean, you don't have, you know, there aren't that many Western companies there because the military controlled everything that happened in the country. But what you see is that the country is actually rewriting their rules and their laws to allow for foreign investment, to allow for U.S. companies um, uh, to invest in the, into the country. And, you know, and listen, it's in the U.S.'s best interest that uh, you know that uh, c- countries have a strong, uh, they're strong economically. Not only because that reduces the amount of foreign aid that we give, which, if you look at you know uh, Myanmar, the amount of foreign aid that's being given by USAID and the State Department and others is diminishing as their economy grows. But what that also does, it's it, it's a safety valve for us because as the economy grows, fewer and fewer people are inclined to turn toward ISIS. You know. Um, the ISIS mentality that their life doesn't have meaning unless they're, you know, they're out taking up the, the extremist views of these, um, of, 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 of Islam and, and of, of ISIS. So, so no, the, you know, our support is just to continue praising them for what they're doing. Honestly, it's just to, I mean, cause you know, honestly, it, it's interesting when you go there, they want to know that the Western world supports what they do. They want to know that they are heading in the right direction. So it's not about writing a check. It's about saying, hey, you know, we're impressed with what you're doing. We're supportive of what you're doing um, and, and basically spreading the word. Because it's interesting how when Americans go there, not just Americans, but Westerners, and say that, they're, you know, that they applaud those efforts. I mean, that goes a long way in giving them the strength and fortitude to continue on. It's just like our founding fathers. Imagine our founding fathers being, <laughs> being at home, the challenges they took on, and just knowing and just that, that, just that, that support just from – from everyday people saying, hey, we have to do this, we must do this, and from the rest of the world saying it's important, that gives people an unbelievable amount of strength to continue fighting this, this, this struggle to, to gain independence and, and, and the, establish a strong democracy. Excellent. Now, we've got um, basically about a minute to go, so there's two things I want to ask you to quickly do. One, so that our listeners can follow what you're working on, let them know how they, whether it's Facebook or blogs or anything, websites, you know, Twitter, how they can follow you. And then secondly, if you can just, and like I said, about a minute, give us a little bit of information on the Elephant Project that you're involved with, and then we're going to have to close. (laughs) <laughs> okay, that's a lot of minute, but well, first of all, you can follow what we're doing at this is the point on Twitter. Um, this is the point, and uh, as far as Facebook, uh, just look up uh, uh, Tipping Point uh, Strategies uh, on Facebook, and you can follow what we're doing. Now, as far as the Elephant Project, it's interesting. I mean, the Elephant Project is what we call a free market solution to elephant conservation. Once again, it goes back to what we talked about, where people don't have to constantly write a check. Uh, we are involved in Myanmar. We're trying to bring. Uh, we're trying to help their captive elephant population uh, that are unemployed, and we're doing that by we're, we're basically going to be investing in the country uh, and building communities in which the funds from those go into a trust that to provide uh, perpetual funding for the elephant conservation, um, and also the 10,000 mahouts and their families who care for these elephants. So basically, it's all part of what we we're talking about: helping build a sustainable economy. Uh, give jobs to individuals, give education opportunities, uh, access to health care, all from the private sector, uh, from the private sector, uh, and not as a government handout. And that is what we're trying to do in Myanmar uh, from the Elephant Project, uh, uh, you know, to, to provide that infrastructure and that support. And you can find out more about the Elephant Project by going to the elephantproject.net uh, to learn about our free market solutions to um, elephant conservation around the world. Thank you so much. It's been great to our listeners, to all of us to listen and learn. So, Dane, thank you so much. We're coming to you live from the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not from government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? 
Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and for their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do. And join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty Health Share and take back control of your health care while helping those around you. Call us at 855-58-LIBERTY for more information or check us out online at libertyhealthshare.org. That's libertyhealthshare.org.